Praise be to Jesus, Mary and Joseph, dear brothers and sisters in the most blessed Virgin Mary. What is the value of a slave of Mary? Or how a slave of Mary is valued in heaven and in front of God? What is their position? Do they have any speciality in heaven? Yes. The slaves of Mary has got a great special place of honor, a remarkable place of honor in heaven and in front of God because they are the specially chosen slaves of Mary most holy. That's why St. Louis de Montfort says, like our Lord teaches in the gospel, it's not you who chose me, but it's I who chose you. So Jesus Christ very clearly says, and he even says that without my father making you or uh, getting you attracted to me, no one can come to me. In the same way, St. Louis de Montfort teaches us that without the son giving that special grace, to understand, go into that deep mystery of the secret of the treasures of heaven, the secret of the graces, no one can come closer to our Lord and Our Lady and even to Saint Joseph. So it's a special, extraordinary grace to whom those give, we can tell that they are specially chosen among the chosen adopted children of God. So we have through baptism, we call us that we are specially adopted, chosen children of God. We bear the sign of Christ through the sacrament of baptism, the indelible character. That means you cannot be, whatever you do once you receive baptism, that zeal, the zeal of God is marked in your soul. No one can erase it. Even if the person become an atheist or even he become a um, other believer, whatever, the character, the mark, the permanent, unerasable zeal of baptism, the seal of baptism, what a person receive in the soul cannot be erased. So if that produces and makes us especially adopted children of God, there is a second reselection or we can say an extra special uh, selection or God is choosing very specifically for specific mission. These are the slaves of Mary, the true devotees of Mary and the true slaves of Mary. Like we know, our Lord said there are many who will write, like to call our Lord, Lord, but they don't want to do the will of the Father. In the same way, there could be many who comes to ask the favors from Our Lady, to pray to Our Lady, be with Our Lady, but doesn't want to imitate or doesn't want to be with Mary, to offer themselves completely to Mary, to go in the same path what Mary has showed us, they may not be interested in that. So that's why it's important why we have to be true slaves of Mary and how God values us each I, our every action, each and everything what we do. So, let us concentrate today very specifically on uh, this aspect, how God values or what is the value in front of God. In the past days, we already meditated and we reflected about that small brush, the value of the brush when it is used by the queen a widow offered that brush as a gift which was hardly any value, very less value. And that brochure she gave to Queen and later she Queen started using that which was of very less value. When a famine came, the Queen kept that same brush of little value in an auction in another country and the price was so high and that we already said that's how a slave of Mary, a person who becomes a slave of Mary 
get transformed and becomes a private property of the queen of Mary most holy when you offer yourselves. Now we have to consider also the important aspect is that with what mentality, with what attitude should you offer yourselves to the queen, to our lady. In that case of that widow, what St. Louis de Montfort says, she offered her as a small tribute out of love for the queen. She doesn't have to because she's so poor. We see a similar aspect in the gospel uh, of St. Mark chapter 12 verses 41 onwards we can read that our Lord Jesus Christ evaluating those people who were um, who were giving their alms or they were donating the whatever to the they call it the treasury or the offerings they were giving to the temple for God for the service of the temple so that is a special uh, part in the gospel of mark even in the gospel of matthew it's there so we can see jesus christ was with his disciples and apostles they were watching it so many people were coming one by one to offer their uh, offerings whatever they have and many rich and poor, everybody was come. Then came a poor widow who just offered just two pieces of copper coins. Simple two pieces of copper coins, which is of very less value. So please not very less value. And Jesus Christ commented, because first of all, she's a widow. She's poor. Nobody doesn't have, she doesn't have any value. After what she puts, it's something very, very less. And all the others, they were offering big amount, big money. Oh, look at that. He's, he had donated so much. All the Pharisees and Sadhus and all will praise that person who offered the most. So in front of the world, in front of the public, in front of the society, in front of others, what values more is the quantity. Oh, he gives so much. Even inside the Christian society, inside the church, inside the Catholic church as a whole, even in the individual churches. This is very normal. Oh, he offered so much. The praise and honor and glory always goes to that person. His name will be uh, proclaimed. But remember, the moment you do some good act, and once it is proclaimed, once it's said to the whole public, to the world, you won't get any more merit in heaven. That's why Jesus said, what you do with your right hand, let your left hand does not know, so that you may have treasure in heaven, the treasury. So here in this case of this poor widow, they say in the old translation, they say treasury. They were offering whatever they have in the treasury of the uh, temple. So this poor widow was the one who put the least in that offering box. The one who put the least, imagine. And all the others were putting more. And what was the criteria of Jesus Christ, the criteria of God? Jesus said, she puts more than all of them. What? How ridiculous it is. For the present day world or the present situation or the present day scenario, those who think with the world, like majority, majority of the Catholics and Christians, we all have that say, you know, oh, everybody is doing that, so we also do. Everybody is going in that direction, so we must also do that. Everybody, everybody, remember well, Jesus said, Many are called, few are chosen. The way to heaven is narrow gate and the path is very straight. But the way to the destruction, the gate is wide and broad the way. And many will go. So this many, many will go means many will come. Say, All are doing that. Many are doing that. So we will also do. 
That's not the vocation of a Catholic. That's not the call and mission of a slave of Mary. We are called to go against the current. If the world and everybody is going, oh, everybody is doing that way, we are called to counter it. That's why the great uh, Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira, uh, the great, um, he is a layman who uh, founded an association of the youth, and he said, when the enemies of the church wants to do a revolution against the good, against the tradition, authentic traditions of the church, it's a responsibility of the true faithful slaves and true faithful children of the Catholic Church to do a counter-revolution. And we are called for that. So being Marian means you are going to do counter-revolution against all these modern principles or heresies or the errors, what is proclaimed and hailed as truth or it's normal, it's happening everywhere, so we also follow that. No. A true slave of Mary, a true devotee of Mary, is called to counter it, a counter-revolution. If the revolution wants to destroy all that what is good in the church and all its traditions, we are called to do the counter-revolution. And who is the propagator of the revolution? Of course, we are the devil. So the children of Mary are called to be the counter-revolutionaries, the counter-attackers of the devil and all the devilish, evil, hidden and open agendas what devil brings through the sons of darkness in this world, in this modern, in this present era. So we are called to do, the slaves of Mary are called to this counter-revolution. And what is a counter? The same thing what Jesus did. Everybody praised or everybody will see only what those great or rich people who put in the offering box. But this widow put just two simple coins, simple. And Jesus hailed that act more than anything and said, she put more. It's counter. It's not normal. But what was counted there? Jesus counted her purity of intention, her intention of her heart. She did out of love for God. She offered everything. And Jesus said, she offered out of everything what she had. All the others offered what is remaining or what is a profit. And out of the profit and out of whatever they enjoyed, the remaining they offered, but she offered everything. There we can see a clear act of slavery to God. To offer herself as a slave, whatever she had, she offered. A surrender, a complete trustful surrender into the divine providence, uniting herself completely to the will of God, complete sacrifice. And that is the essence of the slavery to Jesus Christ and to Mary most holy and to Saint Joseph. That complete desire to give everything what you have like that widow. Now Saint Louis de Montfort teaches us that if you give a small thing to Mary, she will give you back in abundance more than you can imagine. That's why Saint Louis de Montfort teaches even the day when you do the consecration, Make some, make some offering, do something to Our Lady in honor of her. You give something to her or some, to anybody, whatever you want as a small offering. That's why St. Louis de Montfort, even specifically if you give a small needle, imagine you offer a needle or even he says that, imagine you offer an egg to Our Lady as an offering. You can offer any food, anything can an offering like this widow offered this too simple coin, the copper coins. You, it's a tradition in many parts of the world that they bring their first fruits of their farming or the agriculture and offer it to king, to God, in the church, in the temple, etc. There's a Christian tradition where they first offer to God, then to the king. Anyway, you offer anything, even if it's an egg, you offer because a person might be having a chicken um, farm. So, the person can offer the egg. St. Louis de Montfort says, Our Lady will repay you 
with 10 times more than that and he gives an example saying she can give you a bull for that small offering of one egg what you gave out of sacrifice or love so that's what our lady values how much she values an offering of a slave of mary if she values so much then imagine the heaven so heaven wants that that attitude and the complete slavery mentality of that woman in the gospel the widow who put who gave the least but out of the fullness of her heart and this is what we who are called to be the slaves of mary we are called to smash the head of the serpent we are called to fight against the devil we who are called to stand for the catholic church and its tradition we who are called to counter all the revolutionary tendencies and activities what devil is doing in this world with their hidden secret and open agendas and this is our role we have to go in front with this dedication like that of a widow to give ourselves everything our body our soul all what we have a surrender into the hands of mary most holy as a slave of love saint louis de montfort teaches us that we are called for that and we should try your best to give that still we might find the debilities and the difficulties and the obstacles what is hindering us from this complete offering we must seek with humility the intercession of our lady to grant this grace so that whatever we give as so much of great value in front of god St. Louis de Montfort gives another example when we pray it's like we are sinners so when we pray to god when we offer anything we are weak fragile sinful tendencies always our desires are for this world and the flesh and all its desire and especially devil on top of it when we offer it's almost like very less value but when it pass through the hands of mary the value increases so whatever comes through mary so when you offer yourself as a slave to mary you become her private property and you become her own and when she present the value is much more so when that widow offering the coin when she has the intention to offer through mary it gives much more value now i'll explain what saint louis de montfort taught us imagine a person who is a farmer he has his fruits and farming of the fruits and but unfortunately that year his result was so bad and every year he has a custom of offering his first fruits to the church to the god and then to the king he went to his king and what he had to offer was very bad the result was very bad the fruits were not so good he was so sad he doesn't know what to do he went to the queen and told all the problem the queen being the mother she said you don't worry every year you give this year also you give ah but queen how will i give everything is so bad condition it's not meant it's not dignified enough to give that to the king and queen said you don't worry my son you bring what you have remember that you bring what you have and the man was so consoled by the words of the queen accepted what the queen said and be, being obedient as a obedient servant of the king and the queen he went brought whatever he had but it was very pathetic condition what did the queen did the queen took all the fruits what he offered placed in in a beautiful golden plate and decorated with her uh, clothes and ornaments and she took it to the king imagine when she took it to the king the queen taking the offering of a poor servant to the king what will happen the king will be happy because so well presented and decorated but the servant knows that the man knows it's all not good inside but she covered it and she offered and the king will say oh my queen you bring always the most beautiful you decorated all the gifts and the queen said this is from your 
faithful servant so and so and the king with all the happiness take it let it be taken into my treasury let it be guarded there very thankful to that servant who brought it so from this we can clearly understand how when we offer something through the hands of already into the hands of already through her hands and she will offer by covering with her virtues that's what mary most holy does by covering with her virtues which we don't deserve which you don't merit because we are sinners and our natural tendency is to go against the commandments and rebel against the god's designs and plans but she covers it and offer it to god and which becomes that offering becomes a part of the queen and the queen give to king our lady giving to god and this is what she does with the offerings what we do so important is the purity of the intention the purity of the intention of our heart it's not how much you give or it's not what you give but it's with what intention or how you want to give it was it out of pure love complete dedication you want to give completely for the lord then our lady will accept it cover it adorn it beautify it and present to god and this she does with our souls and all what we give to her so let's ask this grace from mary most holy grant us this grace so that we may be have a complete trustful and true surrender and a true offering it's not what and how much you give but with what intention or how you want to give it in order not to show others not to get a name not to get prestige but purely out of love and to give everything what you have a trustful handing over and trusting what you have like that we do in the gospel to give for the lord out of love may mary most holy grant us this grace in our day to day lives so that we may become her true slaves her true counter revolutionaries her true children of the holy catholic church may jesus mary and joseph bless you all